So speaking of Megan, so May, today Megan is going to, um, I believe Megan is going to receive a prize today in New York from Gloria Steinem. Um, she's going to receive this, um, this, this, um, you know, prize. What is it called, Alora? It's not the, the vision, women of vision prize. I, I've forgotten. I'm ashamed. I've forgotten. Um, I should have checked before I, I started the video, but I do have to run out. I don't have a lot of time for this video. So I'm really doing a, a quickie, a quickie and a short. Okay. So I have an idea that she, you know, for a project that she needs to work on with Gloria Steinem, and that is called the womb subsidy project. Okay. I've just conceived it and I want to work on it a little more because I'm a little bit, Okay, so the womb subsidy project. So with the womb subsidy project, I propose that the government, the federal government and state government together, jointly, severally, I don't care, um, should pay individuals, Americans with a womb, Americans with a womb that can carry a fetus, right? Because I know that we have a, you know, I have to be careful with, with like, to gender issues and, and terminology and so on and so forth. So the fact of the matter is though, that, you know, some humans are, are subject to the abortion laws and to the pro-life pro-choice debate laws and some are not right. Bottom line. And so this particular project I propose would refer to those humans who, who actually can become pregnant whoever they are. Okay. And whether they're trans women or, or whatever, right? If you have a womb, you would be subject to this idea, the womb subsidy project, right? Cause we want to reduce, um, abortions. We want to reduce the, the need for women to have to make these very drastic choices in their lives or women or people, I should say, people with wombs, right? Because the womb has become very much, um, a tool for, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it's not just, I mean, at any given moment, any human with a womb inside her body can be subject to very, very stringent, um, laws and enforcement of those laws just based on the fact that she has a womb inside her body, right? The womb is the most legislated body part that there is. I think we can all agree on that, right? I mean, I know that other body parts have their own legislation. You can't sell a kidney. You can't sell a heart. You know, you can't sell this and sell that, etc., etc. But no other body part, not the penis, not the fingers, not even the eyes and the kidneys and heart, are as stringently legislated and controlled by the government and by laws like the womb. The womb is a very special thing. It's a mechanism. It's, it's a tool. It's, 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 um, it's an object of, 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 you know, legislative rulers, enactors, creators, et cetera, et cetera. It's very, very serious to, to have a womb inside your body. I have concluded is, is nothing to, to take lightly. I mean, the moment you're born, you're subject to different rules, right? You, you don't have autonomy over your womb. You really don't. Okay. So I think that we have to start to take this seriously. We have to take people, you know, this whole pro-life, pro-choice debate more seriously and really look to the the people who are impacted by these debates. I mean, these are not debates in the abstract. These are people's lives. <laughs> these are people's futures, right? They're, they're, and not just the person with the womb, but the person and probably equally as importantly, the person that that womb can create in nine months, right? 
So I think that we have to treat the womb as its own entity in, in a way, you know, so that the woman really doesn't own her womb. It doesn't belong to her. It belongs to the state. Your womb belongs to the state, right? And so I think the state or even the government, I should say, because it, it's also the federal government. Roe v. Wade is a federal law, right? So we need to have some let the legislation go further than it's going. Okay, you, you can't do this, you can't do that when something goes into your womb. You know, um, semen goes into your womb and creates a situation where, for whatever reason, you're not ready to deal with, right? Um, it could be your age, it could be your financial situation, your mental, emotional situation, I mean, whatever the situation, you know, once that goes in there, it becomes a whole thing because it has the capacity to totally upend your life in a way that you never planned for, you never anticipated. And quite frankly, in many cases, you don't even want, right? You don't have a choice. So I think we need to think about subsidies for wombs, you know, the womb subsidy project. And I don't know whether it's something that Megan would, would think is interesting and something that someone like Gloria Steinheim Steinem would think interesting and other women would think interesting so that they can bring it to, you know, their elected officials and have it debated whether Americans with wombs that can carry a fetus might be entitled to a financial subsidy from the age of her first menstrual period until the age of 55. It's kind of like, it's not like paying rent for it, but the state has a very serious, the state and the federal government has a very, uh, financial, financial, womb. <laughs> financial womb. the state and the federal government clearly have a very, very serious, important and compelling interest in regulating what happens to a woman's womb. So therefore it, it has to go all the way. It can't just be in a way that penalizes a woman for having a womb. She also has to be, I think, rewarded for having a womb and cared for, for having a womb. Right? So I think that from the time a woman gets her first menstrual period, she should receive a financial subsidy from the state or and or federal government just for that menstrual period process. I mean, because that's a process, right? And quite often that's a very complicated and difficult process. That's not simple, right? You know, you have to carry that all by yourself as a woman. I think the government needs to start to subsidize that and, and really pay for that because the womb is theirs. It's their womb, evidently, right? So now your first period, you get a, you get a womb subsidy right? And you're going to get that till you're 55 or till you stop menstruating, whichever happens first, right? Now that's not all because, and that can't just be like a nominal stipend where, you know, oh, you pay for, you know, the cost of the, the, the accoutrement that you need every month for this experience. You, you have to pay for the pain and suffering, the discomfort, the inconvenience and the risks, that come with that menstrual period, this needs to be subsidized, right? Now, if a woman should become pregnant at any point between first and last menstrual period, for each one of those pregnancies, the, the subsidy that she receives from the government should be increased, right? It should be increased because her womb is now in active service. Whether she chooses to be pregnant or not, it's the womb. It's not her, right? The womb belongs to the government. They need to pay rent. They need to pay for it. I'm sorry, right? I hate to put it like that. You're paying rent, but you, this is their property. They got, you know, that's in your body, right? It, it, it's like eminent domain, avec, right? So now you have to get a subsidy for you know, the fact that your womb is, is now in active service, right? Now, 
if the person is this individual with the room has a live birth, right? That subsidy should be increased if she needs it. If, if her income is below a certain threshold amount, that subsidy needs to be increased to care for the product of that womb, the life. And I think pro-life people will actually agree with this. I don't think we'll have any discussion or fights or debate about this because they are pro-life. They care about life and they understand life has a lot more to do than just coming out of your mother's private parts, right? You need to be cared for and cared for on a level that makes you equal to everyone else in society. So you, you need not just food and clothing, but you need the extracurricular care that comes with a, an appropriate life, a standard of life, right? That equates you to everybody else, in particular to those people who are pro-life, because a lot of these people have a lot of resources, right? And they believe in, in, in equality of life, right? They believe in life and they will be happy to help to pay for the cost of that life until the child is five. Now, once the child is five, then the womb is no longer in active service, but the product of the womb continues to require different things to continue its life. Food, clothing, education, up to and including college expenses. So I think after five years old, the state and federal government should agree to put aside a certain fixed amount for each child, right? So that upon the age of 18, when he or she reaches the age of majority and wants to go to university, they can have any university of their choice because that has been provided for them as part of their right to life expenses right? So it's an extension of that womb subsidy, but that creates a way for the product of that womb and the person who owns that womb to be able to provide for the product of that womb, okay? And I do think that if an individual has multiple births, that they should receive multiple womb subsidies, Right, and I think that we should calculate the womb subsidy um, in such a way as to take into account the cost of living at the time. Because I mean, you know, the subsidy in 2023 should not be the same as a subsidy in 2053. Each year, we need to increase that amount. I think if we did that as a society, as a country, first of all, and then maybe as a wider global society, we won't have any abortions. And if God forbid the product of the womb is on, is not well then i mean the subsidy the subsidy that the, the the womb owner receives should include not just the care of the product of the womb but also the emotional distress frankly that comes from that womb carrier being forced to carry, um, um, you know, a child in her womb that she knows before it's even born will require lifelong care. I think if we are willing to do that as, as a, as a society, as a country, as people who are pro-life, people who are religious, people who believe in life, I think we'll be far ahead. You know, we make a, we'll make a lot of, um, We'll make a lot of change in, you know, we'll reduce significantly the number of people who are making this choice to interrupt a pregnancy. Uh, once we once we do that with humans, then we can move it to the other species as well, because life is life, right? So if, if we're not going to be, you know, allowing uh, people to interrupt pregnancies because it's it's like, you know, you're, you're killing, you're a murderer, you're da 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 um, we also need to stop with the other species too, because they also have a right to life. But that's a different issue. First, let's start with the womb subsidy project, right? This is for Megan. 
I want her to talk about it with Gloria Steinem and I want other women to talk about it and to bring this to our legislators and our elected officials that this might be a way forward to, to reduce the, the, the number of people who need abortions and to, to, to really put our money where our mouth is as far as our position on, on life and pro-life and et cetera, et cetera. And I think it's just going to be so much better for the entire world. It's just win-win for everybody, right? Your thoughts.